Hey everyone, I am live here and I'm going to have Dr. Beth Westy join us in just a moment. Let's see how oh, I can invite her to join me. I guess I'll do it from my computer. I'm new to this, but thank you for joining me. This is our Vibrant Happy Women show and I'm going to interview some amazing women right here live on the show. And um, <clears throat> today I have Dr. Beth Westy. And I'm going to add her in just a moment, but those of you trickling in, sit back and relax and get something to drink. We'll have a good time. Yes. Beth is informing me how to add her. I have done this before in a group, but it looks different on, uh, on here. Okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there's Beth. Hi! Welcome. Welcome. You are the very first guest on the Vibrant Happy Women show, episode one. Yay! <laughs> so, welcome, Beth. Tell us about yourself. Introduce yourself. Where are you from? Tell us about your family and what you do. And um, Oh, okay. Some yeah. People watching might not have heard your episode. And I'll tell people what that is. I'll look it up really quick. I don't memorize these episode numbers, so, you know. <laughs> well, you have a lot of them. You right. Of them. Uh -huh. Look at your episode 73. So if you want to hear Beth on the podcast, go to jenreddy.com forward slash 73, and I'll put that link in the comments later. Mm -hmm. But for now, go ahead. Introduce yourself, Beth. Yay. Thanks. Um, this is super fun. I, I love doing this. I love doing, um, sharing information and everything. So, um, my name is Dr. Beth Westy. I am a chiropractor by training. I'm also certified in acupuncture and Eastern medicine. Um, I really primarily work with women's health, hormones and nutrition. And really I have, um, two books out and my most recent book is called the female fat solution focused on nutrition for your hormones and your cycle. I grew up in uh, Egan, Minnesota, which is a suburb of St. Paul, and I grew up on a goat farm, milk and goats and all that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> I was an athlete in high school and in college. Um, so I was a three-sport three athlete in high school, and then in college, I played uh, volleyball. <clears throat> and uh, so I got a scholarship for volleyball and played there in northern Michigan before I started graduate school. And I have three children. Uh, my first two I had while I was in graduate school. And my third, I graduated, started a business, and then got pregnant a month later. <laughs> so they're 11, 9, and 7 right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what are your kids' names, if you're okay um, sharing? Yeah. So I have a boy, then two girls. And my son's name is Xenophon, spelled X-E-N-O-P-H-O-N. My yeah, my middle's name is Zara, Z-E-R-A, and then my youngest is Azalea, which is spelled like the flower. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, Beth, my oldest son is named Azale, spelled <laughs> not Azalea, but she has an Azalea and I have an Azale, so that's fun. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, Beth, let's dive right in. Tell okay. us some awesome uh, workout strategies we can do at home, either at the beginning of our day, but also maybe throughout the day just to yes. work our muscles and why we should do that. Okay. So this is something I, that's really, really important for women. It can be really tough to find the time to work out, not just because people are thinking, oh my gosh, I, I want to get at least an hour workout in or whatever. But when you have kids, you have to think about, okay, I have to find something for the kids to do. I have to feed the kids. So there's all this prep time before you would even leave to go to the gym. Then you go to the gym and then you have your workout time and then you have your time when you come home to get settled again. So instead of having just an hour workout at the gym, it ends up being like a three or four hour process, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which can be right. really, yeah, it can be tough. So yeah. my favorite things to do at home, um, sometimes you can get some basic equipment, um, but a lot of it you can do without any equipment, you know, body weight things. And the number one thing that I tell women to start with is Tabata's. So hmm. Tabata's is a style of exercise where you can pick three or four exercises and do them in a, in a circuit style. So essentially, like if you remember gym class when you were younger, doing circuits mm -hmm. of different things, that's essentially the same type of thing. But be doing like jumping jacks, sit-ups, um, standing squats, push-ups, 
right? Those would be four okay. exercises to start with that people okay. can typically do or modify. And you do 20 seconds on, 10 second rest, 20 seconds on, 10 second rest, 20 seconds on, 10 second rest, 20 seconds on. And repeat that. You can repeat that twice. You can repeat it four times. You can, instead of it just being 20 seconds, you can increase that to, you know, 30 seconds or a full minute. So you can really do a lot of variables on that base foundation of doing what a Tabata is, but increase the exercises, add more, do more rounds, increase intensity, add body weights to it, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. So you can take that base exercise, formulate it for whatever, and, and go from there. I've done my favorite thing to do with them because I do a lot of work from home now, um, which is different than I used to be on my feet on the go all the time. Mm -hmm. But I have a hard time sitting at the computer for hours. So I will get up and do a quick Tabata, you know, and sometimes it's only, you know, eight minutes of exercise, but it's movement. Uh -huh. It's getting my heart rate up. And that's the biggest thing in terms of fitness and health is to, is to just push yourself a little bit. It almost doesn't matter what you do as long as you're enjoying it and you're pushing yourself. Yeah. So, so what are the four exercises again? One more time. So those were just, jumping those are like my four examples were, um, was like jumping jacks. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember now. Because I read a lot. Well, I think you said squats, um, yep. sit-ups and then push-ups. Or yeah. just two things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've heard squats really work your whole body like, like a plank does. So I yeah. guess if you're short time, you would want to pick the full body workout exercises, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, you can do different ones every day. And that's, that's sort of the beautiful thing is that just change it up all the time. Do, you know, pick four one day and then pick four another day. And my favorite resources for this, you can type in on Google free workout videos. There's so many free workouts out there. Find them on Facebook, Pinterest. There's great Tabatas on Pinterest. So there's a lot of resources out there that you don't have to know what you're doing necessarily. They mm -hmm. have um, apps on your phone, Tabata timers. Download mm -hmm. a free Tabata timer app. You know, do the 20 seconds and 10 second rest. Again, whatever your fit fitness level is and, and just kind of go from there. So yeah, That's so there's great. a lot of different great options. And I like how you used your hands because now <coughs> that's going to be locked in my mind. I'm going to wake up and be like, ah, Tabata, Tabata. Come on. How to do a Tabata. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Yay. I'll throw out a tip. Um, the seven app is one of my favorites, but I also have some Tabata apps. So if you really don't want to be motivated, the, the seven app has a coach that will blow whistles at you. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's great. Okay, and then um, how about some easy meal ideas? When I talked to you in person here in Verona, Wisconsin, at the at the coffee shop we went to, um, you had great ideas. What I love though is you were you're a mom of three, mm -hmm. you have ideas that work for a busy lifestyle. So share some of those with us. Yeah. So my favorite thing to do is, and how I put meals together in my head really quick <laughs> is I always start with a protein, whatever protein I have, whether it's chicken or beef or pork or you know, venison or whatever it is that I'm making. Um, that's what I start with. And, and then I build off of that. So I always do the protein first and then I add the veggie. And then the last thing I put on there is the carb. Whereas okay. I, sometimes, you know, I used to do meal planning different where I, you know, always thought about, Oh, what's the, what's the meal and the carb would be the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then I always found that the protein and stuff would be lacking in my meals in general. So mm -hmm. So I start with the protein um, and go from there. My, one of my favorite things to do to have meal prepped is I have quinoa or I have rice in my fridge ready to go just so okay. I can add it. So that for a really fast, healthy meal, one of my favorite things to do is I'll take chicken. Like maybe I, maybe I was, you know, I took chicken out of the freezer or it's in the fridge and I, you know, have it. Cause sometimes you can even use pre-cooked chicken, you know, chicken, mm -hmm. uh, slices um and or i cook it really quick in a like a cast iron i have a huge cast iron pan so i do a lot of one pan meals cook mm -hmm. the chicken really quick like i'll chop it cook it it takes a few minutes and then i'll add sometimes even frozen veggies to it or or whatever and then mm -hmm. um and then i'll add my 
already pre-made rice or quinoa to that mm -hmm. and I'll put pesto in with it just mix pesto in and then there you go one pot meal uh, it's fast <laughs> it's it's like 15 yeah. minutes total and it's got yeah. you know lots of protein in it and it's lots of veggies and everybody can eat it on the go <laughs> yeah that's so good and then what do you have like a prep day a meal prep day that you get the quinoa done and some things ready to go for the week or just kind of go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to say that I have a full day where I meal prep, but I really, I really don't. I, <laughs> I mostly, if I have more time for cooking one day, instead of just making a regular amount of rice or something, I'll make extra rice. Um, this is my dog. Oh, dog, what's his name? Her name. This is, this is Spot, so he likes to interrupt <laughs> videos sometimes. Um, yes, hi, puppy. Okay, okay. Okay, he's got a ball that he wants me to sit, stay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it's really gross. So I find that if I'm if I have more time to cook and I make even if it's extra noodles or extra whatever, then I just I tuck it away because that keeps pretty long in the fridge, you mm -hmm. know, in a Tupperware. So right. I always have. I always feel more comfortable with like rice that's been in the fridge for four or five days versus, you know, chicken or something. I yeah. know. I know yeah. what they say, it's fine. It just, ugh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of chicken, I, I thought a bag of chicken breasts and I went to my fridge today. And you know how sometimes the liquid will leak out the corners? It was yes. all over the fridge. Oh, that makes me furious. <laughs> so I remove everything and spray it out. And anyway, I have chicken today, if you didn't guess. Well, so Beth, let's say you're at Costco yeah. walking through. Walk us through what you're going to pick up in Costco. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I love Costco. I've actually tried to do a live video in Costco, but they don't let you video there. They're very particular. Free advertising, Costco. You're welcome. <laughs> I know. I love Costco. It's amazing for meal prepping and everything. So I will always go get, um, they have a wonderful selection of organic fresh produce. So I go through the veggies and the fruits, and that's what I pick up first. Um, you know, the apples, the bananas. I mean, it's crazy. You get this huge bundle of organic bananas for like $2. What? It's amazing. Um, grapes, things like that. And then I'll circle through the veggie, you know, the big refrigerator part with the veggies. And I will get things in there for the kids for their lunches, the baby carrots, um, they have those pre-sliced organic apples for lunches, oh, um, yeah. cucumbers. Yeah. Those are little lunch things that I throw together really quick. So the kids have something healthier packed, um, during the day. And then I always get, you know, my kids really like Brussels sprouts yeah. and they like asparagus and they like spinach. And so I always grab those big things and I go through all of that every week. So mm -hmm. my biggest thing, if, um, you know, I always try to have two vegetables with dinner and, and, you know, preferably two different colors, but if nothing mm -hmm. else, they've always got a green vegetable. That's sort of Ooh, my baseline. Yeah. yeah. So you say love Brussels sprouts. How do you prepare your Brussels sprouts? Ooh, yes. So I will actually, um, just put an X in them with a knife, like in the top of it, like, and oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I drizzle olive oil and then sea salts and a roast. little bit of pepper. And then I roast it at 350 for about 40 minutes. So what does the X do? It just make sure the heat can get to the middle? Yes, yeah. So it uh, cooks all the way through easier. Uh, um, oh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, back to Costco. I can envision it. You're, you're passing the bakery section now. And then what? Yeah. <laughs> you're not getting right. anything there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't get any, any other bakery items because we're all gluten-free and they don't have a gluten-free bakery there. Um, but I go to the meats. I usually get um, their organic, the beef. Um, sometimes I'll get the bison there. They have organic, uh, they have uh, bison. Um, and I'll get, uh, sometimes just depending either fish or pork, um, and the organic chicken that they have there. Again, they have such a wide selection of organic things. Um, they also have grass fed butter that I get there. The Kerrygold. I love that. Yeah. And organic whole milk. I love that. Um, and then, the other things I like to get are frozen stuff. So I, I always have on hand frozen, you know, meat, frozen patties, frozen salmon patties, frozen grass fed beef patties. I guess for the on the go fast where I'm like, I literally have 10 minutes to make healthy food. Um, 
it's, it's got, I got to throw it together really quick. So that that's from the freezer section. And then I always have some frozen veggies too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also get my rice and my quinoa there, potatoes, uh -huh. all those, all those basic things. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, and um, Beth got, uh, caught me on to the, the chicken patties they have there. Um, yes. I, I can't remember, are they organic or natural, but they're really tasty. My four-year-old, <laughs> this is crazy, but thanks Beth. She has been requesting salad every day in her little bento lunchbox with that chicken patty cut on top. She like wants it just like that. And then we make a homemade dressing of um, half olive oil, half vinegar, garlic, and salt. And she just devours it. And the, the teachers are like, yeah, she's like one of the only students that eats salad. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. I mean, sometimes you, it's, it's always like a, a toss up when you're trying new foods with kids. Cause you never know, you never know what they're going to like. And, mm -hmm. um, so you're sort of taking a risk, but when they like it, you're like, Whoo! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know your kids do a ton of sports. Tell us kind of about what it looks like for you in the evenings and what you're feeding people on the go, like really on the go. Yes. Yeah, so it is, some days are so insanely busy that I make and prep dinner at like three 30 or four. Uh, um, smart. Yeah. And what I do is I actually put it in to go containers and I have it in bowls. So sometimes, you know, I would love to say that I meal prep for everybody all the time, but I don't, I end up doing it in the middle of the day or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and I'll just put it in containers, put it in bowls. And then I literally, people come in the door, we're changing clothes, getting ready, and then I'll bring it with, and we'll have it in between things or, you know, they're coming in from one thing, I'm handing them a bowl and sending them out to the car again. And they, it's just wow. eating in the car with bowls, but it's, <laughs> but it's healthy, right? But I, so I, I prep yeah. it sort of like Chipotle, you know, I sort yeah. of do it like Chipotle does it. I do like rice and then veggies and then the chicken on top or whatever. <laughs> so, so like what kind of activities are your kids in? I mean, I remember it sounded crazy. I want you to spell it out. Like how crazy is it? Well, they're, um, they're in different activities now. We are, st uh, my son's in, um, band. My daughter is start, she's in choir and just starting basketball. Um, my son's done baseball and then, um, oh my gosh, what's the other one? Soccer. Oh. Did you say soccer was one of them? No. Hmm? Soccer. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't play soccer, but you're busy. You're busy. We're all busy. Yeah. So Yes. That's really cool. Is there a time of day when you stop eating? Like you're done? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, this is, there is, it's, it's funny. It's like you spend so much of your, I feel like I spend so much of my day around food. Like I talk about food and meal prepping and then I actually do the food for the kids. You know, it's making like right before we got on this live, I was, you know, making them lunch because they're, it's, um, they have conferences right now. And so they're home versus being at school. So I'm, you uh, know, making them lunch at home oh. and chopping stuff and I'm handing it to them and I'm like, okay guys, eat your lunches and shh, cause uh. I'm going to do a video. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for working us in. That's good. Well, so yeah. Beth, I know you have, I just got an email from you this morning about something amazing you have going on. And um, I wanted to tell everyone about it because I think they'll like it too. So tell us the big news, what you're doing. Yeah. So I have got a, basically it's a holiday challenge group um, for anybody that wants more resources, help, guidance, getting from, you know, the, going through the holidays through the end of the year successfully. There are so many different I don't know whether to call them triggers or traps or whatever that people fall into where you just, you know, you either fall off of a healthy habit that you created or you struggle with something and um, it can be really easy to get down on yourself and just not start the new year on a good foot. So this is, um, I've been doing this a long time and I have so many resources. So it's a free group. It's a totally free group to belong to where I have meal plans available and it's plug and play. So when we talk about, you know, how do you have healthy meals on the go? It's, it lists that, you know, you just pick these things from different categories, whatever you like, whatever your family likes to eat, plug and play and go. Um, 
and and they're all fast healthy recipes they're all things that i make and my kids eat and um yeah and then there's very important tips for getting through holiday events so like different things for thanksgiving how to not overindulge or how to stay on track because those can be the biggest things um one of the one of the things that can be really tough for holiday meals is that a lot of traditional recipes, not only are they not healthy, but also the way that they're prepared, the texture of them is different. So sometimes wow. kids don't like the food. Yeah. So a lot of the, like, if you like, we're like for Thanksgiving and stuff, you know, these meals have been prepared like this for 200 years and you know, like the mashed potatoes or the sweet potatoes or whatever, like they add to, they put, you know, the marshmallows and stuff on them to try and make them taste different so kids will eat them. Um, but it's not, you know, we don't eat a lot of mashed food now, you know? Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's very, so kids aren't used to these weird textures and it's just a little different, right? As adults, you're used to eating it because that's what you always ate growing up. But for kids, sometimes it's really tough, um, you know, to to go through the holidays healthy too, you know, for the, for you as a parent and then for the kids. So these are all healthy options and they're all, I want to say regular food options where kids are going to, it's going to be easy to make the meal. Kids are going to enjoy it. And then you can have a healthy, you know, meal option okay. on hand too. I, I wanted to tell everyone I put a link for that below and um, it's okay. facebook.com forward slash groups, Dr. Beth Westy holiday challenge. And yeah. I clicked it works. So you can all look in the comments for that. So when does it start? I so we're officially starting. starting. Yeah. We're officially starting it right after Thanksgiving. But from now you can join the group at any time. I'm going to be dropping in so many healthy resources. So if people need help Woo! with something, you can always add, you know, have a comment. Hey, what do I do about Halloween? We're going to do a little oh. like surprise, you know, um, reset after Halloween. And we'll, I'm all, oh. I will have a ton of different things, but we'll really be focused in that three weeks after Thanksgiving to before Christmas time to really get like, to be tighter on track, but there's just going to be a ton, a ton of free resources and content in there. That's going to help you. Um, and then of course, any questions people have, we'll be answering on, oh yes, this is how you get around this. Or, oh, if you're traveling, here's ways to navigate that. So, oh yeah. This is going to be good. This is yeah. going to be the holiday I lose weight. Thank you, Beth. And that's free. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like everything is free. Yeah. Yeah, this oh. is the, so this is also the first time that I'm doing a really big group like this for free. Just putting a ton of stuff out there. It's 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 the first time I've done it and I think you know, it's just cuz I have so much content that is so helpful that it's yeah. going to really really yeah. be a game changer for people. Well, yeah. That's good. Fit and festive holiday challenge. It says, okay, it starts officially after Thanksgiving, but you've got stuff for us for after Halloween. I am so, my gosh, you know, all of the month of November, if we're kind of thinking about it into the, you know, Christmas time, we could even lose weight before the holidays. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's yes. awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. So they, yeah, you can just click the link and ask to join and you'll be added in and and there's going to be okay. a ton of great stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. I'm in there. Everyone join me. This is going to be good. And I want you to cheer me on because I need help. Mom of six, mom of six post baby body. This needs work. So come <laughs> cheer me on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Beth, moving on, I want to hear about your morning routine. You know, okay. like from the minute your alarm rings or, or maybe you wake up naturally, you know, because you're so well <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you do? What's your morning look like from, let's say, wake up to the kids are at school like that? Okay. Um, so my, I usually wake up really early. My first alarm goes off around 4.35 a.m. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I set first alarm. alarm. Yeah, my first <laughs> alarm. Because I literally set an alarm just so I can turn it off and be awake and lay there and be like, I don't have to get up just yet. <laughs> That's how I, I don't know, it's funny. So, and, and then my second alarm goes off about 4.40. And I'll actually get up then. Um, and 
I start my morning right away then with um, apple cider vinegar, lemon water mixture. Drink that. That starts my digestive system. It helps alkalize my body. Um, and then I also do some adaptogens in the morning just to help my body react and deal with stress right away. Uh -huh. um, and then I'll have a little bit of, I'll have like a little bit of coffee and a little bit of protein in there before I go to the gym. I usually go to the gym. Um, so I leave the house around five o'clock to get to the mm -hmm. gym. Workout starts at 530. Uh -huh. so, what kind of work? So I do a boot camp. Um, it's called Burn Boot Camp. I really like it. It's just fun. And it's a, you know, I have a great group of ladies that we work out with in the morning and we're all accountable to each other. So I would suggest if people have a hard time getting in a routine, it's about finding, you know, I want to say that those, they're almost like teammates. You know, I was an uh, athlete growing up and yeah. this is really the longest time I've been consistent on one workout program because I have this, t this group of ladies, it's these teammates essentially mm -hmm. that keep me accountable and I know if I, if I miss the morning, they're going to call me and be like, dude, where were you? Are you going to, are you going to get here today? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys are all in the, the 5.30 AM class. Yeah. And do you ever feel tempted to just go later in the day or you're like, that's my class. That's it. You know, I, I have to make myself go to that class. Otherwise I, I just won't make it. I will find other things to do, um, throughout the day. You know, I'll be like, Oh, I, I should be working on this thing or, oh, I should run these errands. Oh, I should be doing the laundry. You know, I will find other ways to keep myself super busy, but it's so important that I can't make it to the gym. Um, yeah. So if I go at 530, I'm done and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm look, looking guilty because um, I'm torn here. Let me explain why. I have really clear thinking in the morning and it wears off about noon. And yeah. Well, why would I want to waste all that clear thinking? I'm going to work out at noon. <laughs> so I, I don't know. But then I heard the most, you know, I've read blog posts or books about some of the world's most successful people. And what they have in common most often is they drink a green drink. They do their workout before anything else and they meditate. And so mm -hmm. the workout before anything else piece I don't know. I, I'll report back to you in a month, but I, I've got to decide. But I have been working out at noon. I'm lifting weights. But um, I'm only doing it three days a week. I should be doing it, you know, not weights, but some type of workout every day, I'm thinking. But I'm so impressed that you do that. Yeah. I, um, it's, it's just my routine of getting it in. I, I've done things before or if I'm training for something. So I did Ragnar in yeah. August. Um, so it, that's a, you know. Oh, the one in in Minnesota or Wisconsin? Yeah. Yes, the one that goes from Wisconsin to Minnesota running. Oh, tell everyone what that is. That's insane, guys. How many miles is that? Um, so it's over 200 miles. I mean, but you run it. <laughs> so you run it in a, a team of 12. So there's 12 of you and you each do a leg, right? So it's basically a relay race with yeah. 12 people um, yeah. over 200 miles. But it takes a full day and a half. It takes at least 36 hours, um, to complete. So it's, it's kind of nuts. Anyway. So when I was training for that, there were some days I would do double days cause I'd be, I'd want to get my weight training in and then I would do my running. And wow. so I had to do my running in the afternoon. So that was a thing where it was actually kind of nice to take a break, you know, from work, from doing all these things. Cause it's like, I have to run, I have to yeah. get out. I have to get my miles in. Um, right. So very different schedule with that. So I want to say every body is a little bit different. And sometimes just whatever you're training for, it's, I won't say it doesn't matter what you're doing for a workout necessarily or when, so as much as that you're doing it and yeah. then build from there, you know, then tweak, you know, everything else. Like I'm, I'm not doing a lot of running right now. I'm not training for anything specific right now. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's sort of my advice on all on, on the Ragnar, did you, how long were your legs that you were all running? Not your legs, but the legs <laughs> ran. <laughs> I think um, everybody averages around, I think it's like 16 or 17 miles. I didn't run that far. Mine was only like 14 miles total. You know, it split up. So split I essentially ran. Okay. Yeah, you split it up. I ran like four miles, six miles. Wow. Four miles 
something like that or yeah wow. it That's wasn't great. yeah so there I mean there are some gals that are running like 10 plus miles wow That's <laughs> yeah. great. well this has been fun and I feel motivated I'm excited to be in your group um yeah I mean, it's the most healthy holiday there was ever a Yes, yeah. there's a few. There's a oh, there's a few questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do I do my apple cider vinegar water hot or cold? Ooh, excellent question. So it depends on where I'm at in my cycle. If I am in my estrogen phase, which is days one through 14 with your period starting on day one, um, I actually do cold water. And uh, if, after I ovulate days 15 through 28, I do warm water um, with the apple cider uh, lemon water. So yes, cause I do warming and cooling for my cycle. How many days a week do I do my 5:30 a.m. class? I do it five days a week. It goes Monday through Friday. They have a Saturday class, um, that starts at eight. So I do their 8 a.m. workout on Saturdays. And so if anybody's wondering about that, um, boot camp, it's called burn Boot Camp, and they have, uh, they have locations all over the place. Um, spot he's chewing on his ball, right? <laughs> so it's like, squeaking oh my god yeah um, yes he's a nutball so yes I do take my adaptogens in water um yeah and it depends on what adaptogens you're taking sometimes adaptogens can be a powder they can be a liquid they can be a capsule so I take mine in water um and then oh protein I use um so in the morning I use just a pure whey protein it's grass-fed so you're getting all the benefits of having a grass-fed dairy product, um, which is really important for estrogen and hormones, by the way. Um, and then I also will specifically use grass-fed stuff after my workout too, but the grass-fed protein I use after also has carbohydrate and fat put into it. So it's a complete nutrient um, to really help with uh, metabolism. So, so very specific with nutrient timing. Um, and everything that's, I think that makes a big difference too, for women, not only what to eat, but also when, cause again, I think a lot of gals get put off track with just, oh my gosh, I'm on the bit, I'm on the go or I'm busy. And then they realize, you know, five or six hours has gone by and they haven't, you haven't eaten anything. And it really just your blood sugar and your metabolism starts to stop at those, at those points past four hours. So that's where people have a hard time getting it going again. Yes. Have I ever frozen my protein shake? Um, no, I've, well, I've made like protein ice cream, I suppose. Um, and overall with the nutrients, it doesn't necessarily affect it because any enzymes or any active things in it, it gets frozen. So, yeah. Cool. Any question, other questions? Though. Those are great questions. Yeah. Beth, I have a question. So you mentioned, I know when you were on the podcast, episode 73, that's still in my mind, yeah. um, you said during one part of your cycle, you should have, well, maybe you didn't say this on the podcast. Maybe you told me this personally. One part of your cycle, you would have plant-based protein. And then the other part of the cycle, the whey-based protein. Um, mm -hmm. explain, explain that and what someone who might be a vegetarian should do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, good question. So overall dairy is warming for the body. So I will decrease the amount of whey protein that I use during my estrogen phase. Um, I, when I talk about protein in general, I usually references as whey protein just because so many people use that. But if you're using a pea protein or a rice or a hemp protein, all plant-based great options. And I focus on those more during my estrogen phase. Um, and what was the other part of your question? Vegetarians. Vegetarians, they, yes. What so, they do if they're not going to have the whey? Well, I guess vegetarians could have whey. I'm thinking vegans. Vegans. So. Yeah. So yeah. for people who are vegan, um, you can get, you know, you just use a plant-based protein. Um, but I always encourage people to get a protein, a plant-based protein that's a blend, not just one thing. Because when you're a vegan, you really have to work that much harder to get your nutrients in, to get your amino acids in to get all of that in because, um, sorry, my dog <laughs> is for some reason really wanting me to play with him right, like right <laughs> now, like, he's like, stop talking. <laughs> um, well, so, um, Beth, 
maybe one last question, then I'll ask you the final question. So two questions. Yes. Um, you make it sound so easy. Do you struggle <laughs> in any way in your life? And what, you know, being authentic and vulnerable, anything you struggle with? <laughs> yes. Okay. So I, I learned this lesson again just a few days ago. Um, and my lesson is no, no, stay. <laughs> my, so it was my birthday over the weekend. And I, um, and I had way too much. I just, there was, I mean, I had friends bring me cupcakes and there was cake and there was candies and there was chocolates and there, you know, all of the things. And I didn't say no to any of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. So I was like, I was like, this is fine. I, I'll just, yeah, okay, sure. And like, I never, I'm never super restrictive anyway. Right. So like, I'll have a treat or I'll have a, you know, whatever. If I feel like I need some chocolate or something, I'll have it. And I, I don't worry about it that much. But this was, I really went overboard. And I said yes to all of it. And mm -hmm. after like a day and a half of that, I was like, oh. <laughs> I just felt, because I was like, oh, I'll cleanse. I'll just do a cleanse after. I was like, I planned this. I planned on eating a bunch of junk and then doing a cleanse. And I was like, I'll just get it right back. No big deal. Um, but what I didn't really account for was how mentally I would be foggy. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, digestive wise and energy wise, I was sort of expecting that, but I was, oh, definitely not on top. Of, it wasn't until today that I really felt better in terms of how sharp mentally I felt and mm -hmm. just with it. And, and that was the thing that I struggle with is like, dang it. I really can't. Like, that's just, like, that's just dumb. Like, I know better. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, how funny. I, I've noticed the same thing. And um, I just had Robin Openshaw from Green Smoothie Girl on my podcast. And she's completely, like, gluten-free, never sugar. But she seemed really sharp in her mind. And she's well over 50. Well, yeah. Not, sorry, Robin. Whatever age she is, she's for, late 40s, at least. And... um she's sharp as a whip, you know? And yeah. I realized that just, just to eat healthy for better clarity is enough reason. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Well, I love this, Beth. We got to let you go play with Spot. So um, one final question. What does it mean for you to be a vibrant, happy woman? Ooh, um, you know, I think the word vibrant, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have four children now. I have a dog. That's insane. Um, yeah. So the the word vibrant that you use in your podcast, I love it because it, it paints such a visual picture for me. Like I think of like vibrant colors and being bold and being alive. And, um, and to me, that means going after whatever your goals are every day. And that's, that's a really tough thing to do. I know when people talk about it a lot, they talk about it so inspirational and I'm going for my goals and I'm living my dream and blah, blah, blah. It is like a knockdown drag out fight every day to get reconnected with your purpose and to feel that so much so it's going to change your patterning and your behaviors day in and day out. And um, to me, that's what vibrant is, is that vibrant doesn't always look pretty vibrant doesn't always feel great but you're still moving forward in the direction that you want to live and, and sort of being that example from the inside out um that you want to be so yeah so wow so beth you're doing it you're leaving your legacy your legacy of living i mean seriously touching lives well done <laughs> well done Yay. Well, thank you so much for being here. And yes, everyone watching, if you wanted to know, this is going to be on my page so you can watch it. And those watching the replay, um, yeah, join the challenge. I'll put a link above and there's one in the comments below. I'm going to have a fit holiday. Join me there. So thanks for offering that. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. This is so fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a blast. Thanks, Beth. Take yeah. care. All right. Bye.